اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان العین الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین والحمد للہ الذي جعلنا من المتمسکین بولاية امیر المؤمنین ولعمت المعصومین علیہم السلام والحمد للہ الذي هدانا لہذا وما کنا لنہتدی لولان هدان اللہ والحمد للہ الذي لا يبلغ مدحته القائلون ولا يحصي نعماه العادون ولا يؤدي حقه المجتهدون الذي لا يدركه بعد الهمم ولا يناله غوص الفطن الذي ليس لصفته حد محدود ولا نعت موجود ولا وقت معدود ولا أجل ممدود فطر الخلائق بقدرته ونشر الرياح برحمته وودد بالصخور ميدان أرضه ثم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين خاتم النبيين شفيع المذنبين حبيب الله العالمين بالقاسم المصطفى محمد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين ولعنة الله على عدائهم أجمعين من يوم عداوتهم إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فقد قال الله عز وجل في كتابه الحكيم وهو أستق القائلين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولكل أمة أجل فإذا جاء أجلهم لا يستأخرون ساعة ولا يستقدمون آمنا بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم صلي على محمد وعلى محمد أما بعد السلام عليكم جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته I begin in the name of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. There is no doubt that it's due to His kindness and generosity that He gives us opportunities such as these where we gather in remembrance and in glorification of Him Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. Then we begin this sermon the way the commander of the faithful Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhima afdalu salatu wa salam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. We we'll begin many of his sermons by saying, Usikum wa nafsi bi taqwallahi al-azim. I advise you and I advise myself to be God conscious, God fearing, and pious human beings. We have been discussing the subject of Quranic eschatology, the subject of death and life after death as it appears in the Holy Quran. And last week we began our discussion regarding the first station that we will be encountering once we are resurrected from the grave. If you recall, the traditions in the Quran tell us that there are traditions tell us that there are 50 stations and the Quran says that all in all it can take up to 50,000 years to cross these stations. The first station is considered to be the most difficult, the most trying and the most grueling for the individual. And the reason for this difficulty as we had discussed is this is the way in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in His infinite mercy has decided to cleanse the impurities um, of those who have not become pure yet because of the processes of the world and barzakh. And so this is that station in which he wants to purify the individuals from the inner filth that has developed over the course of our lives, which will allow us then to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is what we will be discussing today, the meeting of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or what is known as liqa'ullah, the meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of course, when we talk about these grueling um, and trying experiences, we have to keep in mind that the, that the gradations and the variations in the trials differ from individual to individual, depending on their inner capacity and the type of light that they brought with them into the next world. Some of the trials that we talked about in the first stage include the bareness of individuals, um, the hunger and the thirst that they will be facing. Another 
point that needs to be added to the trials of the first station is that in this station we are told that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make people sweat, yeah? um, perspire. I mean, of course, this is not an ordinary perspiration that we're talking about, but rather this is the sweating out of the evil of our sins that have developed internally. This is sometimes referred to as a spiritual fever. A fever will be given to individuals and they will perspire. Um, and when you look at the traditions, you know, they say the perspiration of individuals will be to that extent where there will be some who will be drowning in their own perspiration. Yeah? And this is the scene when we look around. Um, and of course, as we talked about, this is not an ordinary perspiration. You know, sometimes we link the two together and say, well, I sweat when I'm outside in the summer. But this is not that type of perspiration or that type of sweating. This is a punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is excruciating to that extent where we get a tradition from our sixth Imam, Imam Ja'far al Sadiq alayhi salam. <laughs> He says, إِذَا كَانَ يَوْمُ الْقِيَامَةِ حَشَرَ اللَّهُ الْخَلَائِكَ فِي سَعِيدٍ وَاحِدٍ He says that in the day of judgment, that when the day of judgment comes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will gather all of mankind together. فَيُقِيمُونَ And they will be placed there حَتَّى يُلْجِمَهُمُ الْعَرَقِ until sweat begins to overcome them. They will begin to perspire to a tremendous extent. فَيَقُولُونَ And the response that they will say, لَيْتَ Allah يَحْكُمُ بَيْنَنَا He says, I wish Allah would just judge us now. They will become fed up from that perspiration to where they will say, I wish Allah will just judge us. وَلَوْ إِلَى nar. Even if He sends us to the fire, it is better than what we are going through right now. Yeah? Subhanallah, imagine the response of people that they'll be willing to go to Jahannam then face that one punishment of, of, of the adab of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they say, yarawna, annahum yarawna that they look and they think that anna finnar rahatun fi ma hum fi that they believe that the fire of hell will be a relief from the punishment that they are going through now of course when we look at this statement, right there are a couple of things that we can understand from this. It's like that the, the purpose of this first station, as we talked about, is to purify us enough to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to accept the realities that God will give us. And this statement alone shows us that the individuals are not yet prepared to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because one, they believe or they think that the fire of Jahannam would be a relief from what they're going to. While one who becomes purified would never even think about going, yet alone wish to go to the fire of Jahannam. So we see that they have not reached that state of purity yet and they have to still undergo these different forms of punishment that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has laid out. Um, and the second point that they don't realize as well is that this spiritual fever that they're undergoing which is causing this sweating is actually actually designed to cleanse the pollution that has developed in their soul, right? So it may be difficult, right? But it actually serves a purpose to better the human being long term. You know, just like, for example, when somebody is sick, we are told in traditions that if one knows the value of their sickness, they would not ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to cure them. Yeah? The way sins shed off from an individual because they are being tested by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So likewise, you know, in that process of testing, the individual is actually being benefited, but they don't have that mindset yet to realize that. And thus they have to go through this entire process. And we are told for some, the process will take up to a thousand years. Yeah? A thousand years for them to finally realize that no, I don't want to go to Jahannam. Yeah? That no, this is actually beneficial for me and I will take the difficulties of this rather than facing any difficulties in the next stage. As we are said, all of these difficulties are actually gearing us and leading us towards one special encounter. And that is the encounter with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah? Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala says in surah number 84, Verse number six: Ya ayyuhal insan, inna ka kadihun ila Rabbi ka kadhan famulaki. Yeah, Allah says, "O oh man, you are continuously striving towards your Lord with great exertion. 
Yani whatever difficulty you're going through, you're actually going towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then you will meet Him. Yeah? He says that, فَمُلَاقِي You will meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after this exertion that a human being goes through. Of course, when we talk about this meeting of God, it is not the meeting of physical meeting that you and I experience on a day-to-day -day basis or as we're experiencing right now. This is rather a higher form of understanding. And I want to read something that our ulama tell us. They say that in fact, this meeting is actually the elevation of the perception of the human being on one hand and the revelation of God's presence on the other. And that is what is meant by the coming of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let me read that again, yeah? Because I don't want us to leave here thinking we're going to physically meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? It means something else. It means that it is actually the elevation of the perception of the human being and the revelation of God's presence to him at the same time. What that means is, you know, in this dunya, sometimes we feel the mercy of God. On that day, the full mercy of God will be made apparent to us. Here we feel the love of God sometimes, isn't it? But then sometimes we don't because of our own state. On that day, not only will I be elevated, God will reveal Himself in His love and His mercy and His compassion. And this is when we will meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And for one to get to that stage, they have to go through this period of difficulty, depending on each person's gradation to make sure that they are ready to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inshallah, in the next coming lectures, if God gives us life, we will discuss some of the other stations that are known to us. Um, not all 50 stations are known to us, but some are, and inshallah, we will discuss them in as much detail as we can. وَآخِرُ الدَّعْوَانِ أَنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا احد صدق الله العلي العظيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان العين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والحمد لله قاسم الجبارين مبير الظالمين مدرك الهاربين نكال الظالمين صريخ المستصرخين موضع حاجات الطالبين معتمد المؤمنين اللهم صل على خاتم النبيين وسيد المرسلين محمد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد وصل على سيد الوصيين أمير المؤمنين علي بن أبي طالب صل على محمد وعلى محمد وصل على الصديقة الطاهرة فاطمة الزهراء سيدة نساء العالمين صل على محمد وعلى محمد وصل على السبت الرحمة وإمام الهدى الحسن والحسين سيد شباب أهل الجنة صل على محمد وعلى محمد وصل على علي بن الحسين ومحمد بن علي وجعفر بن محمد وموسى بن جعفر وعلي بن موسى ومحمد بن علي وعلي بن محمد والحسن بن علي والحجة القائم المهدي صل على محمد وعلى محمد صلاة لا غاية لعددها ولا نهاية لمددها ولا نفاد لأمدها اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات وتابع بيننا وبينهم بالخيرات إنك مجيب الدعوات إنك على كل شيء قدير اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد In the second sermon I wanted to brief you 
um, regarding some of the work that we have been doing with the Peel District School Board. I used to give you updates frequently last year, um, and it's been a few months since we've given any updates. Many of you um, who have re may, may have read articles in the newspapers that currently the PDSB is going through some difficulty with their students regarding Salatul Jumu'ah. Um, they have instituted certain policies um, which the students, the Muslim students, find offensive. Um, and they've actually challenged them and taken them to the board. And we have been part of this process for the past uh, six or seven months now. And I just wanted to give you an update. They're going to come out with their final findings uh, next week. But um, it started back in the summer or pre-summer where PDSB, um, Peel District School Board, um, they changed their religious accommodation policies. Um, for those who have students in the Peel District School Board, there are certain religious accommodation guidelines that they have set up. So for example, that if you don't want your child to participate in music class, they can be accommodated out of that class. It's no longer in, uh, they're no longer exempted from that class. Before, you can exempt your child from a subject altogether. But now they accommodate. So basically what they want to do is they want to take the learning objectives of the class that you're asking to be exempted from and trying to find a replacement where they can teach you those same educational tools but in a different methodology for example and what additionally they have done is that they have not allowed now for group exemptions or group accommodations they are now individual accommodations so even if a hundred Muslim students want to be uh, a day off for Eid they're not just going to set up a blanket rule saying all Muslims will get Eid off they're going to have to have one person at a time go and seek this accommodation from their students. And the reason why they were driving behind this individual policy rather than a group policy is because they wanted to get to that stage where they do not allow congregational prayers at their schools anymore. They say that the school cannot resemble a place of worship. Right? So what they did was that they banned any type of congregational prayer at their school. So if three Christian students wanted to have a Bible study together where one person would read out loud, that is now prohibited. If Muslim students, five of them are gathered and one goes up to lead the Salah, it is now banned. So this is the policy that they created. Uh, myself, along with our vice chairman here and four other of our Sunni Imams from the local mosques here in Peel, um, have been in long discussions with them regarding this policy to say that it is um, not a fair policy and rather it violates our religious principles, especially when it comes to Salatul Jum'ah. Yes? Um, with everyday prayers, we have a choice to pray home when we get home. We can pray individually or we can pray in congregation. However, for Jum'ah, there is a set time and most of the kids are in school during that time and Jum'ah must be done in congregation. So after months and months of, of going back and forth on this issue, they finally changed their policy. And their policy now allows for Juma Salah to be recited in congregation. Yeah? Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. I wish we could end there, yeah? but it doesn't end there, unfortunately. The next thing they said was now that they are not going to allow the students to write their own khutbahs. Okay, and they cited an example. Now they've never given us, unfortunately, we've been again, we have a meeting with the director of, of PDSB on coming up on Tuesday. Um, they've never told us where this incident happened, what the incident was, or what the specifics are. But in one of the schools, a teacher who was overseeing the Juma prayers had to stop the student because what they recited in their khutbah was offensive to somebody, right, or someone. Um, and so because of that one incident, which they've never come out and, and actually informed us of what it is or where it happened, they were now saying that the students will not be allowed to write their own khutbahs. Rather, they were seeking that we, the imams, put together a series of khutbahs for them so that the students can have what is called a khutbah bank. They can go into that bank and take out a khutbah. The idea of a khutbah bank is not bad. Yeah? I come with scripted khutbahs. All of the Imams come with scripted khutbahs. In fact, 
there are khutbah books out there for those who would like to lead khutbahs, for example, or Friday prayers in their home or they're on vacation. There's actually books that are out there. So the idea of a scripted khutbah is not a negative in its own. But we argued with them that you are stripping the rights of the student's individuality and their ability to find different ways to connect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to humanity by depriving them of this right. But they went ahead with this policy. The mistake, the unfortunate mistake that was made, again, I don't see anything wrong with a scripted khutbah, right? But the mistake that the PDSB made was they never informed the students or their parents of these changes. Yeah? The new year started in September and the students went to go lead their salah and they were informed that no, you cannot have congregational prayers now, you can only have it on Fridays. That caught them by surprise. Then they went next and they said, okay, we have khutbahs, no, you can't read your own khutbahs. And what it seemed like, and what it seems like to many of our Muslim um, brothers and sisters in Peel, is that this is a very specific target on Muslim students. And even if that's not the intention, right, that's what is perceived. That because this is something that only affects Muslims. And then when you tell Muslims that no, you have to have your scripted khutbah read ahead of time. Uh, and then, so, it's a long story, right? Um, a month ago, the students, or maybe three weeks ago, this is when the article started coming out, the students delegated the board. So every two weeks the board has a meeting with the trustees and those who have certain complaints can delegate the board. The students delegated the board. We attended this meeting. There must have been about 150 people showed up at that meeting to complain about this policy. They went back and retracted this policy now. The policy now states that a khutbah can be written by a student as long as it is turned in by Monday and the principal can read it over and approve it and give it back to the students. Yeah? So they accommodated that much. Yet the perception within the Muslim community is, is that you are once again targeting Muslims. Yeah? You are saying that we don't trust you to recite something. Right? You can't throw out the whole basket because one apple is rotten. Right? Um, one person made a mistake. This policy has been in effect for years and years and years. And if one over the course of 20 or 30 years is rotten, that doesn't mean the whole policy is rotten. Um, so we're in this stalemate now where there are these discussions happening. But there is a large number of Muslims who feel that they are unfairly being targeted. Um, that's to say that we don't trust you, we want to read over the things that you say. If you think about it, this doesn't happen if, for example, I'm asked to give a speech in front of the school, no one will check my speech to make sure it's okay. If I have to give an assignment before class and read a lecture or read a speech, no, my teacher will not check it ahead of time. So why then do we have to institute this policy in khutbahs only when it's targeting Muslims? I think it's a valid concern. Um, and if you hear about this, it's important that we support our fellow Muslim brothers and sisters in this. Yeah? Um, I understand that there is this general idea, and it's a negative, it's a wrong idea, um, where we know we sometimes, as Shias, don't hold Salah or Juma Salah as highly as our Sunni brothers and sisters. And because of that, we sometimes feel, well, this is not my fight. No, it is our fight. Yeah? It is a collective grouping that we have to stick together, and we can't show differentiation on this. Right? Today it's this, God knows what it will be tomorrow, and we need to have each other's back. So if you hear about this, if your children come back to school and saying that, well, there is a meeting where parents are asked to come, please go, attend, show, show solidarity, show strum, strength in numbers, and speak up if the time is right. Inshallah, I will... Um, I will inform you of what happens in the meeting. Their decision on how they want to continue this policy is set to come out December 12th on this coming Tuesday. Um, and we have a meeting on December 13th with the, uh, with the director for other issues as well. And inshallah, when time permits, I will inform you of what is happening. But that's just the latest update of what our children are going through as far as their public school life is concerned. وَآخِرُ الدَّعْوَانِ أَنْ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر صدق الله العلي العظيم